Uh, the presentation focuses on our experiences from Asia. Uh, we, of course, have others around the world. Uh, the coastal zone, if we look at the issues ongoing there, um, from the uplands, uh, all either anthropogenically induced or environmentally through uh, climate change or other um, environmental effects. Sometimes they aggravate each other through synergistic effects and uh, lead to further problems. This is one of the things you think about if you think about the coastal zone, mangroves in uh, being destroyed or in a further dis uh, state of uh, destruction. They could be anywhere around the world. Here it is from our example from Vietnam. If you take a bigger picture, um, often these coastal areas or the mangrove belts in them are reduced to a very tiny, small edge. Behind that, you see here a whole area of shrimp ponds, and behind that, very important rice growing area. These are, by now, economic engines for the, the country and impossible to remove, because also the local institutions are very strongly anchored there. Even the Provincial People's Committee are invested in such shrimp farms, for example. And the work then focuses on this coastal area. You see these T-shaped, inverted T-shaped uh, elements, and that's what part of the work that we've been focusing on, helping stabilize these coastal areas and um, improve the, uh, the, the, the area for coastal rehabilitation and mangrove uh, regrowth. Here's a schematic uh, approach of what was done. There was some hydrodynamic modeling because the environment also is very uh, strong, uh, strongly against uh, rehabilitation of, of mangroves because these storms wipe out anything you, you normally just replant into the environment. So the approach has been using small bamboo fences and uh, such as these. They cost around $50 per meter to local uh, labor and work and they have really sh been shown to work uh, on a local level. And there again it is in involving local institutions, the Ministry of Forestry and Environment, uh, other institutions involved in the coastal zone, etc. Behind that is also other um, approaches to uh, mangrove rehabilitation, also involving different institutions, the forestry uh, in terms of uh, nurseries, uh, water management, which is very important for irrigation of the, the mangroves, and later on, after a year, it can look like this. So it involves always the uh, cooperation within a territorial approach of different institutions, responsible institutions locally. Um, this involves also uh, environmental education at the schools but also in communities. Any intervention relies very strongly on securing uh, the, the staples such as here rice, very important in Asia, but also uh, considering aquaculture, the economic engine in some of these areas, here introducing polycultures, not just shrimp but other uh, high value species or those that are also consumed locally, which uh, are very important for uh, local consumption. If we switch to other problems in the coastal zone here, an example from the Philippines, uh, a lot of uh, environmental uh, problems from urban waste, plastics, and other elements. <coughs> One approach we looked at and was very successful was a public-private partnership uh, with a company, Holcim, that produced cement blocks and needed fuel. So uh, what was set up was a waste separation and recycling facility uh, compression into blocks of plastic and this was used then as fuel in the uh, in the power plant or sorry in the cement plant uh, disposal sites for the residues were created and also um, emissions testing was was done to ensure the the safety of these areas so if we look at the the relevance of the the um, territorial approach here um, and compare that with other uh, approaches such as integrated coastal zone management uh, putting uh, opposing human interaction perspective per se versus just conserving the natural resource perspective. It involves spatial and land use planning, improves requires the improvement of coordinating structures at the meso level, and also multi-sectoral governance. You've heard this all before. These are our lessons that we've learned and which are very important. Looking at the challenges in the areas, um, we heard it again this morning from Julio also and others. It is a very complex process, both in planning and then implementation. Uh, you have to consider low, uh, urbanization also in rural areas, uh, consider economic hotspots, aquaculture, harbor work, also tourism in parts of Asia and, and so forth, very important. 
um, it, looking at where do you focus your investment opportunities and uh, how can you um, uh, improve them, both in public, uh, public and private uh, sources. Local authorities are usually overburdened with this, uh, ma this complexity, uh, have diverging interests and missions based on uh, their own uh, remit. Um, it requires multi-sectoral sectoral approaches, but the question is who will be in lead? We heard it before that uh, you need a locally very powerful uh, capacity or entity to lead such uh, initiatives, and that is always the difficult part. How do you find a strong governor or a, a strong personality or an institution to lead these? Uh, again, in some places, for example, in the coastal zone, it's the Ministry of Environment or Ministry of Forestry uh, that is in the lead or has the mandate for that, but as soon as you step into the water, it's the Ministry of Fisheries who's responsible. Behind that, you have the rice field, it's the Ministry of Agriculture. And between that is the, the coastal protection dike, and then again, it's a different ministry. So these have to be uh, brought together and harmonized. Uh, and also on the donor side. I mean, uh, you have a lot of donors just uh, <coughs> roaming around and intervening in the Mekong Delta, for example, and there too, you, you uh, could, would, we would wish for more harmonization. If you look at um, opportunities and avenues for cooperation, we see that the countries are aware. We've heard it also from colleagues this morning. Um, stakeholders are open to such interventions, at least at the higher levels in the institutions. Um, and also our partners are looking just beyond mere conservation, because conservation doesn't feed people, um, per se. Uh, from rural development, you need to have a shift towards regional development uh, um, in, in a uh, territorial approach. And this also helps to overcome such line policy compartment, uh, compartmentalizations. Um, compliant manning, uh, planning and investment incentives both from financial cooperation and technical cooperation, that is what we've seen has uh, helped us be successful because sometimes you do need investments in infrastructure at various levels and there it really helps to have a strong partner who can help with the financial cooperation. And vice versa, the financial cooperation can, require, uh, can rely on technical expertise in implementing their side. So the recommendation from our side is uh, to look at the role for the donor platform to focus members' interest towards the coastal management issues in future. Thank you.